what's going on guys welcome back to the next part of the building a spotify app series in the last part we finally got uh tracks added to a playlist and in this part we're going to strictly focus on swiping to remove a track from a playlist so if that all sounds good make sure you start by smashing that like button down below opening up xcode we're gonna jump back into our workspace here i've got my simulator up as well and just as a quick refresher what we're going to do is when you tap into one of these, we want to be able to swipe to delete uh, the particular song. So there's two components. The first component is actually getting the API call working. And the second component is getting the UI working. So what I'm going to do is in the API caller here, the API call to add tracks is actually very similar to removing tracks. So I'm going to start by just copying and pasting what we wrote. And we're going to tweak it as needed here per the documentation. So the first thing you'll notice is this is a delete call and the URL that we are going to hit is the same. So it's playlists, the ID and tracks, but let's go ahead and make this a delete call. So here we have post, and I don't even think we support delete yet. Uh, we are going to add in delete just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and update this to be a delete call per the REST API standards. And our URL is looking good. Let's see what else we need. We're not gonna mess up the JSON this time, or at least I'm gonna try not to. So for the body, let's see, let's look at JSON body parameters. It wants the roots to be tracks, and this is going to point to, okay, this is different. So it's an array of objects where the first, where the key is URL and the value is what we've got in here. So instead of just having this, we're gonna have another object in here. This is going to be URL and that's going to be the value. So URIs points to an array of these objects with a URL and the value. Let me just double check that to make sure it's not screwed up. So let's see, we've got that. This is a, ah, this is a URI, not a URL. So this is tracks and then the inner one is URI. So let me go ahead and update those. So this is tracks. And this is URI. So let's hope that's correct. We don't need to print out the JSON. We don't need to say adding. The headers should be good. And let's see, what do we get back once it's deleted? It looks like we once again get a snapshot ID back. And what we're going to say is uh, if this uh, occurs, we're going to say completion true. Otherwise, it is going to be false. And I think that's all we really need to do for this API call. Go ahead and hit command B and let's fix any errors that we have. Looks like we have one here. All right, let's see what's going on. So we're saying URI points to this thing. Let's see, consecutive statements on a line must be separated by a semicolon. That does not look right. So let's see what this is complaining about. So we're gonna say this JSON is a dictionary. We might need to give it an explicit type for that error to go away. Sometimes the compiler is just dumb. So we did that and it looks like it's still giving me the issue. That does not seem correct. So let's see, JSON is a dictionary of uh, any. So we're gonna say, ah, I see, this should be a dictionary like that. Let me go back and take a look and make sure that it's right. The JSON always trips me up. So let's see, we have a body where the root is tracks and it's pointing to an array of uh, URL objects or URI objects where it just has one value, which is the URI key. So let's see our JSON. The root is a uh, actual dictionary, which looks good. And actually what I realized is we don't want curlies because this isn't, um, this isn't like Python. We actually want these to still be squares. That's why it's actually yelling at me. So we're going to add uh, the square brackets, not the curlies. Be careful about that and we are compiling and good to go. Now, all we need to do is allow for swipe to delete in a particular uh, playlist. Now, we don't wanna allow swipe to delete in a playlist that you don't own. So this is an album, that's not a good example, but these are playlists. We don't want the user to be able to delete these because it just won't work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the playlist view controller and this is the controller that's responsible for actually showing a playlist. What I'm gonna add here is a private var, or we can say public var rather. And this is going to be uh, is owner. And by default, it's going to be false. 
And what we're going to do is when the user taps into a playlist from the library playlist controller, then we push the controller somewhere in here. What we're going to do is we're going to say is owner is true. That way we'll use that is owner Boolean to basically say like, can the user go ahead and edit it, which is deleting in this case. So we're going to say is owner is true. And finally, let's go ahead and hook up the swipe to delete. And all of that is a part of the table view protocol functions. So we're going to add a couple functions here. One of them is going to be can edit row. Um, oh, those are collection views. Interesting. So this is going to be a little different now that I think about it. So for a collection view, we want to see if there is an editing style. So I actually don't know off the top of my head how you can swipe to delete for a collection view cell. Interesting. So instead, what I'm going to go ahead and do, since I don't want to waste time figuring out how swipe to delete works, what I'll go ahead and do is we're going to add a long press gesture on the collection view. And if you're the owner, we're going to go ahead and show you the option to delete. So at the bottom of view to load, we're basically going to do what we did um, when we you know, added a gesture to allow adding. I'm going to go ahead and just add a gesture recognizer here. So we're going to say let gesture is a UI long press gesture recognizer. We're going to create it with a target and a selector. So we'll say selector here is going to be did long press. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is say collection view. Collection view. Let's go ahead and find it. It's uh, right here. We're going to say add gesture recognizer for the given gesture. And right below it here, I'm going to go ahead and add that selector, which is going to take in a single parameter for our UI long press gesture recognizer. Let's go ahead and update the selector so it actually passes in the sender, which is this underscore colon business. And we are going to guard first and foremost that the state of this is the GAN. All right. Then we're going to get the point of the touch um, in the given view. So we're going to say let touch point is going to be gesture location in collection view. Then we're going to try to get the actual uh, index path out. So we'll say guard let index path is going to be collection view. And let's see, we want an index path for an item at a particular point. So we can go ahead and use this one, I believe. And this is going to be touch point. And if it's, uh, the reason it's optional is because you might, you know, tap and hold like in a random place, like the header here, but uh, that's why we guard it. But basically if we have an index path, then what we can do is get the track to delete. And we can go ahead and say, this is tracks and on tracks, we're going to get the index path dot row. And finally, we're going to show, we can show either a action sheet or an alert. Uh, let's go with an action sheet. We're going to say action sheet is a UI alert controller. So this is going to have a title of delete, or we can actually say remove rather. It's probably a more appropriate uh, text to show. And here we're going to say, would you like, would you like to remove this from the playlist? And this is going to be an action sheet. Let's go ahead and line break this so it's nice and aligned. And we want to go ahead and show this action sheet. So we're going to say action sheets, animated true. And we also want to say completion nil. Now on this action sheet, we're going to go ahead and add a cancel action. So UI alert action title is going to be cancel. The style will be cancel and the handler will be nil. We're going to copy and paste this. So we're going to want a remove action. All right, the style will be destructive, which is kind of an awkwardly named thing, but it just gives you a red colored button. Um, just kind of warning the user of like, you know, like you're doing something like a deletion action or something. Um, let's go ahead and line break all of this. So it's uh, nice and aligned like that. And once the user goes and taps on this, we're gonna go ahead and say API caller shared. And we're gonna go ahead and remove a track from a playlist. The track will be track to delete, which should really be track to remove. Playlist will be self dot playlist, which we're gonna say self optional in a moment. And completion here will be success. 
Now, if this succeed, succeeds, we want to uh, remove the track in the tracks collection. And we want to go ahead and refresh the collection view. So um, if you take a look at how our collection view is actually being driven, if I find all those functions, we're actually um, going ahead and using the view models. So we not only want to get rid of the view model at that given position, but we also want to get rid of the track. So we are going to say, um, let's see, self.tracks, we're going to remove at a particular position. And this actually returns to us what the particular thing that we're removing is. Um, so let's see, we're gonna say remove at index path dot row. And we're gonna do the same thing for view models. Now we can go ahead and say self dot collection view reload data. We wanna do all of this stuff on the main thread. So we're gonna say dispatch queue main async, just like that. And let's see, let's see, we want this to be weak self here, um, but we want it to actually be weak self even further up. So I'm gonna say here, weak self. And we wanna unwrap self because we're gonna need a strong reference to it anyways. So we're gonna say guard let strong self equals self. And now we can just use this strong self um, because it'll you know be retained in a weak capacity. This will be strong self.playlist. This will be strong self.tracks, view models, collection view. And go ahead and hit command B and let's see what happens. Um, looks like my, I think the indentation is all good. We're gonna go ahead and say print um, removed. Otherwise we're gonna print failed to remove. And let's go ahead and see if we have any errors up here when we compile. Looks like we do not. Let's go ahead and hit Command R and let's see if this works. I have a feeling I probably forgot to do something, but let's see. We're gonna go into our library as soon as our simulator decides to stop being slow. We'll go to this one and we are going to tap and hold on this first song here. Um, we probably wanna show what we're removing because the word remove doesn't really just show like what we tapped and held on. So instead of remove, I'm gonna have this be tracks track to delete dot name and the oh that's the title actually let's go ahead and change that back we want to do that for the title of the uh, action sheet itself we're going to say would you like to remove this um, from the playlist let's try and run this again otherwise it's slightly misleading to the user of what did they tap and hold right you might remove the wrong song accidentally so let's go ahead and open this up I'm gonna go ahead and tap and hold on this last song here. We're gonna see this, I'm gonna hit remove. And it looks like it removed it successfully and it also updated our UI. And here is the uh, JSON, we're printing it out in our API caller. So we can say uh, in our API caller, we can get rid of all those print statements. Let's see, let's see, let's get out this print right there. And we can come back to our controller here and I can also get rid of the print statements in here because it's definitely working now. Or the print failure we can leave, I guess. But let me try removing one more just for the sake of sanity. Let's remove this one, gets rid of it, gets rid of the view model and deletes it. If we close this and open it up again, it actually uh, still got rid of it. One thing I noticed is there's a slight bug with how we're caching images because it still has the images of the two songs we deleted. But I'm sure actually if we go ahead and open this app again, close and reopen it fully, it'll, Spotify will update the image in the back end, which it in fact did. So the image is now reflective of the fact that the other two songs are not a part of it, but that's basically playlists in a nutshell. So you can go ahead and, you know, go crazy, make as many playlists as you want, add and remove songs. You can uh, even share them. Looks like we don't actually, oh, we do have it hooked up. Look at that. So we have this hooked up as well. In the next video, we're going to start to take a look at saving albums, and that'll be the last core feature um, that we put together. There are going to be a couple other things that I do, like haptic feedback, as well as signing out that we haven't really done yet. But that's all I've got for this one. If you haven't liked the video yet, make sure to do so. Helps out a lot. Leave any comments down below if you just want to say hi. That also helps out a lot. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next one.